Hello again, wonderful to see you. My name is Anthony and this is Break the Twitch. Welcome back. Break the Twitch. And this video is really just about drinking more water. If you need to drink more water, it might be simply that you need to make drinking water more fun. My wife Amy and I really love bubbly water, Topo Chico specifically, and we kept buying it and we realized that there was like some pretty substantial cost to it. And there was quite a bit of like, environmental impact because we're buying all these glass bottles. They were expensive and then we had to recycle them and the volume of it wasn't that much. And we really wanted to be drinking more water. We enjoyed bubbly water, but uh, all of those things I just listed, right, were a problem. So I did some research and came up with what I'm gonna talk about in this video. The way that we drink more water is we make our own bubbly water. But I hear you say, Anthony, Sure, doesn't SodaStream do that? And aren't there a bunch of solutions that you can buy? Yes, but the SodaStream is really expensive upfront. The thing I'm gonna tell you about is just about as expensive upfront, but the proprietary system makes it really difficult to not use their canisters, like their CO2 canisters to make bubbly water, which is why building your own system over time, like three to six months, basically, pays for itself and then it's just like infinitely cheaper. Let's let's do some DIY together. Let's make some stuff. For some context, the majority of this video was filmed in March of 2020. So let's kick it back to the March 2020, vastly different looking Anthony, same shirt though. He'll take it from here and then I'll drop in to give you some best practices and pro tips. Sure, there are at home systems as well, like the soda stream that you can buy, but even those are fairly expensive. They can go for over $100. And the refill CO2 cartridges that they sell are proprietary, which means that you have to use theirs and they're very expensive. It's about $35 for a single canister that will make you 60 liters of bubbly water. Now you might see this five pound CO2 tank next to me here and be a little bit intimidated, but what I can tell you is that for $20 per refill, this five pound CO2 tank will get you about 330 liters of bubbly water and has some other benefits as well. You can actually increase the PSI or the pressure of the CO2 going into your bubbly water to make it really have that good hard fizz that punches your tongue when you drink it. Whereas the soda stream, it's pretty limited. It stops at about 15 PSI. So if you like a good punch to your soda water, there's actually a better way to do it that is more environmentally friendly and less expensive too. So here's what you need to make your own custom DIY water carbonation system. It's actually pretty straightforward. You'll need this ball cap here, which is going to be the thing that will go on top of your bottle in order to fizz the bottle. You'll need some hose to connect to that. This is the regulator for the CO2 tank. This gauge here tells you how much pressure is left in your tank. And then this gauge tells you how much pressure is actually feeding into the line. The line will get connected here. And then obviously it'll run into this piece that then charges up your bottle. And there's just one more critical piece that is the bottle cap. This replaces the cap of the bottle and goes on here and seals the bottle up enough like that so that when this is all hooked up, you can charge it up like that. And it should go right on with a push down like that. So it seals on. This particular regulator came with some little attachments that make it easy. So I'm just gonna use the ones that they came with. I'm gonna pop it right on the hose here. Gonna pop that right over the hose. And then this will go on here like so. And I'm really gonna clamp that down firmly. Just 
me twist it. Probably a little hard to see, but yeah, that's not going to come off. <laughs> okay, cool. There's that. And then on here, it comes with a couple washers that are going to go in the end of this. Before connecting this, make sure that your output is turned off. From there, you want to clean out any dust that might be in here. And you just do that by opening it very slightly to let some out and then closing it again. Okay, like that. I need to put this guy in there like that. And then we connect it, I hope. It was sitting there, so I hope that's what happened. First one, see that white tape right there? Do not use that. Do not put that tape on the threads. You don't need it. You're not even supposed to do it. Tamper that guy down just like that. So I'm just gonna, for safety purposes, double check. Nope, easy does it now. Oh yeah. Oh, that's pretty secure. And then you're gonna wanna come down over here. The final step to complete the system is to attach the ball valve for the cap onto the end of this hose. I'm gonna use this just to uh, the ridiculously large wrench to just again, tighten this up, make sure we're all good to go there. This is your basic system now. You can store this in a safe place based on CO2 storage standards that I'm not yet aware of. Effectively, it is a zero waste system that you're just gonna use old plastic bottles from something in the past in order to charge up whatever it is. There's one benefit to the system that I didn't mention yet. With SodaStream or the name brand Fizz Creators, <laughs> you can only fizz up water. It just has to be clear water. With this system, you can make anything you want that is a clear liquid fizzy. You can make sparkling wine, you can make sparkling apple juice. You can make, you can, you can recarbonate your soda so that if your Pepsi goes flat, you can hook that up to this bad boy and recarbonate it in no time. How amazing is that? And that brings us to our final step. When you're ready to charge up the water, you want to start with cold water. All right. Cold water infuses CO2 better. I don't know why I read it on the internet. So that's how I know it's true. The second thing you want to consider is you need to leave a good chunk of space in the bottle so that the CO2 has room to fill the bottle and then get infused in the liquid. So cold liquid, leave room in the top and I'll show you what you're going to do. You want to remove all of the air from the bottle, the space that you've left by squeezing it as close to the top as you can without spilling it very carefully. And then place the cap in and screw it on. And that should seal it up. Just so you know, there's also on the market a cheaper blue plastic cap that can be used for this. I would not recommend getting it. I read a lot of reviews that said that that thing leaked and did not last very long. So definitely get the stainless steel one. I'm sure it'll last you a lot longer and, and you know, trash is for tossers. So it's better to get the metal one. So you can see here it's compressed. What happens if I just kind of go like this? Oh, 800 PSI in this tank right now. I will check for leaks later because I guess you're supposed to put soap on it to check if there are leaks, but I'm going to assume that there are no leaks. There were no leaks. Now that I'm showing the pressure in the tank coming in, I'm adjusting this nozzle right here and I'm going to start at 20 PSI and then I can turn this on. Do not do this. First attach the ball clamp to the top of the bottle and then allow the pressure to come into the hose. It's a better way to do it. It makes it easier to attach. All right, so I'm gonna put this on and it should fill it up uh, very quickly. 
just like that. I'm gonna shake it. Okay, here's a very quick clinic on optimized bottle shaking technique. You're gonna wanna hold the bottle upside down because the carbonation is going to be coming from the bottom and will go up through the water. Some of the uh, tops have a hose that will come midway up, thus bubble from the center of the bottle. Even then, I found that the best way to optimize your shaking technique and do a quick carbonation of the water is to hold it like this around the top and then just swirl it. Hopefully I'm not making a plastic bomb right now. Okay, this is also a great arm workout if you're using a two liter bottle. It's fantastic, I'm really feeling it in the biceps right now. Okay, I'm gonna turn it off at the tank level first. You do not need to turn off the tank every single time for the last eight months and through two different tanks. We've just left the tank open and use that little black knob to turn on and off the pressure going out into the hose. You can take this guy off right here. Uh, hold it right there, mustache having March 2020, much fitter, Anthony. You need to wait. If you turn this thing off too quickly, it's going to turn it into a projectile and destroy your kitchen cabinets. Ask me how I know. Oh yeah. Oh, look at those bubbles. Look at those bubbles. Cheers. Oh, it is so punchy. It is amazing. And there you have it. Your very own DIY bubbly water maker. When you're done, you want to transfer that uh, water into a glass bottle or storage, something for the fridge. We don't put it in glass bottles anymore. That just became too much work. We just keep the two liters in there and rotate a few of them out whenever we need to chill water in preparation and then have one to drink. It's just easier to do. That you can use and uh, keep your bubbly water cold there. That is it. I hope you enjoy and we'll see you next time.